Normally, episodes of Building a St. Lawrence Skiff will begin with a quick review of what has happened since the last episode, but this is the first episode, so here is the intro. Welcome to episode number one. A St. Lawrence skiff is an indigenous craft to the Thousand Islands area of the St. Lawrence River on the border of the United States and Canada. I have several of these skiffs that will carry a rower and one passenger, but I need a larger version capable of carrying myself and two passengers on guided tours of the river. Most of these tours will take place in my home base of beautiful Chippewa Bay, but the easy trailer ability will allow me to explore other areas. I will be creating a craft which combines the aesthetics, stability, and performance of this traditional skiff using modern methods. Join me on this journey through video episodes as the skiff comes to life and we all learn just what it takes to create one. Who knows, you may end up joining me in the skiff or even creating a skiff of your own. Building a St. Lawrence skiff is brought to you by the generosity of Total Boat and the help of Chase Small Craft. Check them out. Let's go over how a strip-built boat is created. First, you need a strong back. I'm making mine out of kiln-dried lumber. It is important that the strong back is straight, level, sturdy, and secure from moving easily. On top of the strong back are mounted a series of station molds, in this case, 23 stations. The molds are evenly spaced, perpendicular to the strong back top, and parallel to each other. In this drawing, the yellow molds each stand alone, screwed to the strong back. Once the keel is placed into the slot on top of each of the molds, they become very sturdy. The green molds at each end have the same shape as the stem, which will be placed on them. These two green molds also have the small blue molds attached to them. These molds are wood colored in real life. I made them different colors in the drawing just to make it easier to understand. Here is an end view of one of the station molds showing the keel on top. The strips, here shown in purple, go on the outside of the mold and are edge glued. The final ones are glued to the keel. A layer of fiberglass cloth, shown in blue, is placed over the strips and the keel. And then epoxy resin, which is green here, is soaked into the cloth. Once this cures, the hull is removed from the molds, flipped over, and cloth and epoxy is applied to the inside of the hull. Sounds easy, doesn't it? It may be a bit more complicated than I've illustrated here. This process creates a very sturdy, light hull. Let's compare it to the traditional method. Imagine this is built on molds as well. They aren't shown here. The keel is laid on top of the molds. Strakes are added, usually five to seven per side. Strakes are clench nailed. The copper nail is bent over on the inside to hold it in place. Steam bent ribs are added every four to six inches. And these are also clench nailed through the strakes and the rib. This process demands more skilled work, makes for a heavier hull, and requires more wood. These hulls also must soak up so they don't leak. It is not all bad. They are beautiful boats and serve the St. Lawrence River well for over a hundred years now. That was a quick explanation. Follow these videos and you'll soon understand the strip built process. Now let's get started. The first thing I needed to acquire was the molds. They were CNC cut by Clint at Chase Small Craft and arrived here by truck on a cold day in January. What do you think, Spec? You ready to help? Come on. Well, this is the beginning. This just arrived from Chase Small Boats. We're gonna take the molds off, take them inside because I've gotta put a round edge on all the molds with a router. Don't wanna do that in the skiff house, it's too dirty. We'll do that in the boat shed. There's the only other full-time person around here. Cause he is a person, Mr. Speckles. So we're out here in the boat shed. You can see there's a Chris Craft. It is about 34 degrees in here right now. It's a lot colder than that outside, but we get some solar gain with this side of the shed. We won't normally work on the skiff out here, but today we're doing some stuff that is a little bit dusty and dirty. 
and I don't want to do it in the skiff house. So I'm going to take you through one uh, mold, one section mold, fully on video rather than the time lapse. And I'll probably fast forward you through the loud stuff, but I'll explain one complete mold, how we prep it. Okay, you can see right here, the when the CNC machine makes this piece, it puts in a number. It also puts in where the shear strike is, that little divot there. So just because we're gonna be doing something to this with the router, we're gonna mark right here. You can see there's a little mark there where that uh, shear strike belongs. We always do it on the side with the number. There's no reason for that. That's, I'm just trying to be consistent. And get this to stay and not move on me. I'll put a line all the way across with a Sharpie so I can see that easily once we make the strong back and have these station molds on there. Now what I need to do is round off this side and this side, this side and this side. So there'll be four separate steps. Make sure I leave enough clearance for the router here. Clamp it on both sides. Now this is MDF, not MDO. MDO is signboard, which is plywood with craft paper on the outside of it. This stuff is MDF, medium density fiber board. It's like really fine chipboard. It's very stable, but it's also a little bit fragile. So we don't want a horse on this too much until we get it in where it's going to be and attach to something. So we're gonna clamp it on both sides because we're gonna be pushing down a little bit. I've got the router set. I wanna go in this direction with the router so that it doesn't um, scoot along, it's just climbing. I didn't go all the way. There's no sense in rounding off past where the shear straight goes, because the only reason we're rounding this off is so we don't dent the inside of each strip when we clamp it in place while we're building the boat. <clears throat> we don't have to go across here. This is where the keel goes. My plan is to put a coat of paint or varnish or something on this edge right here to make sure that it doesn't deteriorate, even though we will tape it over so the uh, glue doesn't stick to it. We'll put some painter's tape on it. I went back over that one spot because the router had kind of twisted a little. It wasn't sitting flat. I could feel that that was happening. And when that does happen, you get an uneven radius. Even though it's cold out here, the sun therapy is nice in the wintertime. And all this wood shavings that I have on the floor actually keep your feet quite well insulated. There's no heat in this shed. None of this is hard, it's just each one takes a little bit of time. But before you know it, you got it done. I am taking the edge off of here, just quick with the sandpaper. Get you guys out of there. Okay, so here they are, finished, ready to go. Uh, these pieces don't get that done because these are for the stem. There's the smaller pieces. There's the stem shape right there. Uh, you're probably wondering, Scott, does this uh, place look this messy usually? Yeah, pretty much. I'll clean it up occasionally, but today's not the day. Okay, how long did it take us? Temperature got up to 40 degrees while we were here. And it took us about, I think two hours. About two hours to do what we did today. So we'll mark it down as two hours. We are started. 
Next episode, we will begin building the strong back and adding the molds to it. We will also see where the wood came from that will be used to build this skiff. Join me soon for episode two. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our Patreon page where there is a lot of extra content.